the idea of making something that looked like a Hollywood film at home, like years ago, it was like, forget it, it was never going to happen, but because of Moore's Law and the fact that computers got faster and faster, you can go into the shops today and a computer you buy straight off the shelf is probably going to be better than the ones they made Jurassic Park on. You know, the biggest project was recently was Attila the Hun, which was for BBC One, as well as directing it. I also did all the visual effects. We haven't got the luxury of a big studio in that, to be honest, we only had about eight guys that we could use. So it's like, how are we going to do these big kind of effect shots on a TV budget? And a little trick I like to play with myself is I'll watch a feature film like, you know, Kingdom of Heaven or Lord of the Rings and and I'll, I'll watch a shot that does something similar over and over and I'll convince myself, even though I know it's a lie, that they did that same shot in about a day. And so you sit and watch it and you initially look at it and go, no way, you can't, you can't do that in a day, it's impossible. And after a while you go, well hang on, maybe if those guys were just like still images and maybe if that background was just a painting and maybe if the camera move wasn't really doing this and slowly you start to think, actually, it could be possible if I kind of compromised a bit. There was a lot of shots where these people were charging across the field, you know, and, and depending on the historians you talk to, they're saying there's like 30,000, like quarter of a million people took part in the end battle of the film. Like the typical Hollywood way to do this is to make loads of 3D, like a computer game would, loads of 3D men that are all really cleverly running and avoiding each other and going up and down and they're all lit and it's very sophisticated stuff and that just wasn't an option for me. But if you look at the final effect of that sort of approach, as long as the camera doesn't turn around and, and see the other side of them, if it's just flying forwards, which most helicopter kind of moves do, they could be flat images, I was thinking. And so I thought, well, as part of the shoot, we built a giant green screen, but we basically got them to sprint across the green screen and we followed them with the camera. What I was able to do was to, to loop that footage, then stabilize the footage, and then you could key out the green. And obviously there were still some of the bits and bobs, then you paint those out, until you had like a clean guy running on loop as a texture map. If you put that animation then onto squares, little flat squares within the computer, and you move those squares over a simple terrain so it looks like they're undulating up and down, the, the effect you get when you render that out is a bunch of men all running with their timings offset. And you can't tell it's just eight guys. It looks like it's um, maybe, you know, hundreds. I was really surprised because the final render when it came out, I thought looked pretty convincing. It looked like a crane move, you know, and it was, it was just done in the computer within, that rendered within literally like a minute. It only lasts about three seconds, but it's enough to kind of fall for the illusion that there's actually thousands of people running across the field, whereas really it was just eight guys and the rest was all done in the computer. You know, I believe with the new Core i7 coming out, um, what it means is that the same performance that I'm using here is gonna be available, you know, for the consumer. There's absolutely nothing stopping someone going down the street, onto the high street, buying a computer, buying a digital camera, and making something that looks as good as a Hollywood film can. If you know what you're doing and you've, you spend the time, you know, you've got the creative ability, there's absolutely nothing stopping you.